Now, stay with vaccines. The president has told us on a number of occasions that no one will be forced to take the vaccine. In South Africa, vaccine hesitancy accounts for around a quarter of South Africans eligible for the jab. And while you cannot be forced to take the jab, can it be used against you at work or when applying for a job and going to a foreign country or gaining access to a football match or a music event? Let's discuss this now with Chloe Loebscher, Senior Associate at Law Firm Bermans. Thank you so much for your time this evening. You know, the Labour Department at their briefing this afternoon made it clear it's a workplace risk assessment, uh, which, which sounded a lot like to me uh, that the government's saying it's not for us to decide if you're going to lose your job for not having the vaccine. It's dependent on the workplace rule, the risks in that particular workplace and the policy in that workplace. Am I right? That's exactly correct, Sally. So it's really going to depend on a worker's um, particular environment, and it will never be a one-size-fits-all approach. So context is absolutely key. Does that mean that actually a workplace can say to someone, look, you're not vaccinated, we've assessed the risks, we have to let you go? So unfortunately, that is a very difficult question to answer. We are really in uncharted territory here, and there really needs to be a careful balancing act between a number of rights and obligations. So, you know, I think that if an employer takes a, bu a very bullish approach um, and goes to dismissal in that uh, scenario, there is very likely to be legal challenge. You know, we really need to be thinking about the employer's obligation on the one hand to ensure a safe working environment for their employees, but also for anyone who enters their premises. Then on the other hand, we have employees' constitutional rights and particularly the right to bodily integrity and to the right of freedom of conscience, religion and belief. And it's really those rights that need to be balanced against each other and based on an actual risk assessment in the workplace, the employer then needs to determine whether it's really justifiable to put in place a mandatory vaccination policy at the workplace. Another issue that is very critical here is the issue of consent, because we are talking about medical treatment. A vaccine is a medical treatment that ordinarily can only be given to someone with their consent, which needs to be informed it needs to be voluntary. And if we're thinking about a workplace vaccination policy, it's that voluntariness of consent that really comes into play. Because if you're an employer telling your employees, you have to come back to work, and in order to do that, you have to be vaccinated, that really does undermine the voluntariness of one's consent. So what we really need to think about here is that in terms of the National Health Act, there are certain exceptions where consent is not actually required for medical treatment like this. And one of those is where the failure to actually get this medical treatment would result in a serious risk to public health. Now, that's obviously not going to arise in any workplace environment like a particular office setting where you don't really have employees coming into close contact with members of the public. But if you're thinking about something like a mine, for example, where employees are congregated in close proximity to one another, or if you're talking about hospitals or teachers who are coming into contact with the public on a daily basis, that is something where there may well be a serious risk to public health if employees are not vaccinated. And those may be workplaces where a mandatory vaccination policy may well be justified. <laughs> Does it make a, a difference the reason that you're not getting vaccinated? I'm thinking, is there a difference between someone who, for health reasons, has been told by their doctor, look, you're not a good candidate, there are definitely risks because you've got this issue, uh, religious and cultural reasons, as opposed to someone who's read a few articles on the Internet and has decided they're an anti-vaxxer? Exactly, Sally. That makes all the difference. So we've actually got this Occupational Health and Safety Direction published by the Minister of Employment and Labour that was recently updated now in June to deal with this uh, question of mandatory vaccination policies. And one of the things that direction says is that employees have a right to refuse on constitutional or on medical grounds. So constitutional would be that, you know, freedom of religion, for example, 
or medical uh, grounds being if you are fearful that you are allergic to you know, a particular substance in the vaccine, for example. Those are grounds recognized in that direction, uh, which would give you a lawful basis upon which to say to your employer that I am actually refusing to be vaccinated. I want to ask you about uh, applying for jobs. We know that um, HIV status has always been something that's very confidential. So if someone is going for a job interview, and they're asked if they're vaccinated or if they're planning to get vaccinated. Can a prospective employer do that legally? Can they ask someone if they're planning to get the jab? Um, and can they deny someone a job if that person's not prepared to get the jab? That is also a very difficult question. I mean, at this point in time, it, it's really untested, but I think there are definite uh, unfair discrimination issues here. It's, it's the same sort of principle about asking someone if they're HIV positive. That really leads to decisions that may be based on someone's medical condition or their personal beliefs. And that really brings you into this territory of unfair discrimination and really may well end up in claims. So I think employers are going to be, you know, need to tread fair, very carefully about asking those kinds of questions, you know, particularly where the nature of that particular role doesn't really require you to gotcha. be vaccinated again because of this risk yeah. assessment. Let's move away from the workplace. Let's talk about access to a football match or access to a music event. Um, can you be denied if you don't have a vaccination legally? That's again, I mean, it's, it's going to be the same kind of question here, you know, in terms of a person, an employer's obligation to create a safe working environment that extends to not only their employees, but also the public who they are allowing onto their premises. So employers are allowed to impose obligations on anyone who enters the premises if it's based on solid health and safety grounds. So again, it's going to be a question about, is there a real risk of exposure and transmission at a particular event uh, and, you know, if, if there is, you know, it, it may well be that someone is then allowed to say that you can freely choose to, to come to this football match. But if you do, then we do require you to be vaccinated. These are all issues that unfortunately are very difficult to answer at this point in time. And I think there are going to be a lot of challenges in the future. Thank you so much. That was Chloe Loebscher, Senior Associate at law firm Berman's.